Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is MedTech67 again, and we have a 2018 Ford Transit T250 with the 3.7 liter non-turbocharged V6 in it. And uh, like all of the non-turbocharged V6s, it has transmission problems, especially on the torque converter. And my theory on why this is is because 3.7 creates less power, and it is constantly in and out of torque converter lockup. And it's constantly shifting from 6 to 5, 6 to 5 all the time, especially on the highway. So we just get a lot more clutch material in that transmission and, and all that good stuff. Uh, Tyler's behind me right now, racking it up. We're going to be uh, doing the, uh, the transmission on this today and a set of catalytic converters. Uh, we had the Magnaflow catalytic converters in there before that you've seen me put in on the channel. And they have shat themselves right out the exhaust pipe. Uh, they're, they're completely empty. There's, there's nothing in there. So we're going to go ahead and get all of that replaced today and uh, tag along with us if you want to see how to do a transmission. Hey, it's me from the future and something I forgot to tell you before this uh, video began is before you ever do this job, don't start this job, especially if your vehicle is still drivable, until you have two A-frames, uh, the front lower control arms. If you don't have those and you go to try to take them off, the chances are you're probably going to destroy them because the rear bolts that go through the, the the subframe also go through your lower control arms and they seize to the bushing and when you try to take them out the bushing is going to tear apart and your vehicle is going to be immobilized at that point. I always have two lower control arms here at all times for that very reason. So before you start this job go out and grab you two lower control arms. Go ahead and buy them, have them there and ready. If it doesn't end up happening, cool, you're very lucky and you can go return them, they'll still be in the box. But you're probably going to need them. Hey it's Harrison from the future again and god I'm getting older. So when you lift this thing, do not lift from right here when you're doing the transmission. This is honestly where we usually lift from, right here. I like it because my lift pads literally cannot slip off of it right there. When we lift to do the transmission, we lift from right behind the, uh, the transmission cross member. Uh, that's because this has to come out for us to remove the transmission cross member. So when you lift it, lift it from there and put it up on jack stands there or your lift or whatever you're using because this all has to come out. So one of the first things that we're going to want to do, whether you're doing catalytic converters or the transmission, is unhook that O2 sensor right back there. <clears throat> there is a keeper for that sensor on the back of the cylinder head, but we will get to that uh, when we get it in the air. We just wanted to go ahead and hook that, unhook that now before we take her in the air. Now let's go work on the steering column. So as a safety measure, because we're unhooking the steering column, you want to take your seat belt off, loop it down and through your steering wheel, and buckle it. Buckle it. That way your steering wheel cannot move on you. And this is the orientation you want it anyway. Your steering wheel will also be locked, but this is just to make sure that we don't destroy that clock spring. Now we're gonna hop in here with a 10 mil. We're gonna take off the steering shaft bolt. Um, that is supposedly a one-time use bolt from Ford, but you can put some Loctite on it and uh, put it back in. And then we've got three 10 mils to remove this boot and we can lift all of this off of the steering column. Yeah. So now you can just slip that guy right up there. Get some better light here. There's one more bolt in the back. Yeah. three for some reason. Oh, it's that steering column we just did on the E350. That yeah, three. three. Alright, and now our rack is free and everything can drop out the bottom now. Alright, so we're going to put her up in the air now. We're going to take off the front tires. At this point, we're going to undo the brake caliper brackets. We're going to leave the calipers on it. We're going to hang those to the side. We're going to take off the lower ball joints and uh, drop the whole front subframe. So, let's get her in the air. So we're going to take off the uh, caliper bracket with the caliper attached to it. Uh, that's going to be 221s. 
These bolts are one time use, so you do need to throw them away. So next we're gonna take off the uh, ABS, or sorry, uh, no, that's gonna stay. We're gonna take off the sway bar mount, which is a five millimeter Allen in the middle and an 18 for the nut. Correction, that is a six mil, not a five mil. And just set that nut on there so you don't lose it for later. Now we're going to take off that tie rod nut, which is a 21. We gave it a two to spray there. I don't think this is its first time coming off. Or I think it's probably its second or third time coming off. So It's got that little 10 mil in there that you can deform a little bit before you actually have to worry about it. So it usually comes off in one or two hits. Next, we're going to get this ball joint nut off. It is a 30 mil. And now we're going to use a puller to push that ball joint up and out of there. Sorry, separator, not puller. So we're going to go ahead and do everything on the passenger side that we just did on the driver's side. I see no point in walking you through that. It's identical to that side. And uh, we'll meet you underneath. So next we're going to take off this entire like valence panel that we have right here. And then we're going to take off these two load bars, crash load bars, and get them out of the way. And then we're going to drain the power steering system. And there's two more. that you're gonna wanna get. There's a little air scoop for the uh, intercooled versions. And there's a clip right there. And there's another one right over here. You're just gonna get a trim tool in there and pop off, but they usually break. There we go. And like I said, they usually snap. Next, we're gonna take off these load bars, which are all held in with 13. So there's two bolts on the left side and then two bolts over here on the right side. You're probably going to want a ratchet or a long extension and a wobble or something to be able to get in there to that side. So once you have that loose, you're going to notice it's still sitting there. So will just down that way and then hinge it off. Just be careful because this thing loves to bust you in the face. So you're going to want to get an oil drain in here underneath your power steering pump and then we're going to pop off like I said this high pressure line and that's pretty much going to drain your entire power steering fluid system right there as far as your reservoir and your pump goes. There will still be some inside the rack. Now you just give it a wiggle and pull. There's an O-ring in there that's kind of captured. And that'll all drain out. I might get lucky because this one hasn't driven in the snow a lot and the salt. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this isn't going to work. I hate the internet. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that's not because of the penetrant. I guarantee you it's not because of the penetrant. <laughs> I've tried penetrant before and heat and hitting right here on the sleeve with an air hammer and all that. And I've set the bushings on fire. It just, it, it doesn't work. That's, that's honestly the first one in about two years that I've had actually come out like that. Watch, the other side's not. 
Here. Just to ward off the evil spirits because I feel like that's all the penetrant's doing at this point. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Oh, I know, right? I was... I was smacking myself in the mirror this morning like, you can take off lower control arms. You can do it today. <laughs> had these off before that was way too easy that's the first time i've ever had two come off usually one seizes well our power steering fluid is still draining so uh i honestly don't expect that to go that easily i'm starting to think that i've had this subframe off before for some reason or another uh so we're gonna let this drain a little bit more it's almost done and uh we're gonna put some caps on the line oh look we're pretty much there we're gonna put some caps on the line and we're going to unhook this line and the line that goes right up inside here. See if I can get you. It's, this is the hardest thing to film. I'm going to hold real still and put an arrow on the screen. It's just a, uh, a hose clamp. You're, it's best to have one of those remote hose clamp jobs to get that one off. But you're going to take that off, fish it down and through. And then uh, we'll fish it all over the engine cross member right there you can see one goes through and one goes over and there's a little 10 mil bolt right there that holds it on so we need there is a t30 right there you need to take that off it's an easy one to forget and it tries to rip out your ac line when you drop the subframe down so let's get to that i don't know if i've ever filmed me getting this off i usually just say hey uh, that's the thing you're going after Cramping, Tyler. I'm cramping. I got it on film. That's like trying to catch the Sasquatch on film. Oh, smack the camera. And keep dirt out. And we're gonna get this 10 mil out here. Because now there's only two bolts holding in this whole subframe. We're gonna roll the uh, tranny jack up underneath, but first we're gonna jack it up a bit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get in here and support this with the training jack. We're taking everything off of it. You don't necessarily have to. It just makes it a little bit easier for us. I'm gonna turn it like this. Get it to meet that kind of level. No, because it's got that little protrusion up front right there. It grabs it pretty evenly. Okay. And I like to take a uh, C clamp and clamp it right here just so it can't go spilling off. All right, so we're gonna grab those power steering lines and then fish them through. And then we're gonna take off the two front bolts and this whole thing will come on down for us. And we'll go ahead and fish these through. Remember the uh, high pressure one goes over The engine cross member. Come on. And then the low pressure one, the return that comes from the cooler, comes forward a little bit. It goes through the engine cross member. It's got like one retainer on it. to get the front 
cross member bolts out, which I believe Tyler has here. You're actually going to go through the A-frame here. Go for it. So you saw the cross member drop a little bit there. Now he's going to get the other side. You're going to want to go ahead, and I'm sure you probably could fish it out, but to make it easy, these 218s right here, we're going to take out, we're going to loosen the back ones. Can you guys see what I'm talking about there? We're going to take out the front one, loosen the back one, and we're going to knock those out of the way. That way this can drop straight down. I'm glad I caught that. It's also a good chance this thing's going to pee on you. They like to retain water. some point. So I'm going to loosen this back one. Loosen it up. Take your hammer. And just knock that guy on over. It'll still hold it there for you. Oh, we're getting lowered. Like I said, it likes to retain water. Us. It just R. Kelly'd me. I'm covered in rusty water. Wipe that down. Yeah. Drop this down nice and slow. I'm just going to set that up where it's coming down nice and slow. Just kind of guide it down. It's a good chance it's going to hang on your control arm. It's still coming down. The big thing is you don't want your steering shaft on your rack catch up on a lot of the lines. You kind of have to shift it over as it comes down just to get it so it doesn't catch on any of the lines. Alright. There's, the there's our entire front subframe out of the way. So I just realized we weren't recording and we took off the O2 sensors which connect, well, it's supposed to connect up there but we had shorter aftermarket O2 sensors so we relocated it to right there. Um, the CAD O2 sensors and then like I said, here, let me go ahead and get glide on here. The driver side O2 sensor has a little retainer clip there into the back of the head that you're going to need a trim tool to pop out. Oh, we've already popped it out from way up there, so that'll come right off. The passenger side O2 sensor can be a real bear because the connector is hanging on that wire right there, and it's hard to get a good pinch and squeeze and pull on it. There's no way I'm going to be able to film that. And then the catalytic converter sensor for this side was right there. Uh, so go ahead and take that off, and we'll get this... Uh, this out of here. So you're going to want to get a uh, wobble or U-joint on a uh, deep 15 and crank out these exhaust bolts. It might behoove you to put a two to spray on them to get them moving, but these have been off recently. Go ahead. To avoid unnecessary trips to the hospital, 
leave a nut in that's easy to get to on each side about a couple threads on until you've got everything ready to come out or otherwise this thing's going to smack you right in the head. Over here is where you're definitely going to want the wobble to be able to get up in here. Sometimes it's better to come in from the back here. Better straight line angle you can get on it the better. Focus. We're gonna go ahead and pop off the shifter cable here. Get that guy out of the way. And then you're gonna wanna take out the uh, two bolts that hold in the shifter bracket. Just gonna go ahead and get this out of the way now. We're gonna leave those training lines in for right now until I can get a drain pan underneath here. Uh, but we're just getting off all of the uh, tertiary stuff that is a pain in the butt to get off later. Uh, the exhaust is gonna sit there for right now. Uh, next, we're going to get that entire drive line out of the way, and this is where it really comes in handy to have a drive line socket. Reason I just took the shifter cable off is it's really nice to be able to move this thing to get your socket in the right angle, and I can do that by just reaching up there and popping the shifter lever with that shifter cable out of the way. And this is what I'm talking about. You're going to want a drive line socket if you can. Uh, it's a half inch wobble, it's a 12 point. Uh, these are a 12 millimeter. Reach up here, pop her in neutral, turn the shaft, put her back in park. All right, now with those pain in the butts out of the way. We can take off the carrier bearings, but you have to do this carefully or it's a great way to get a drive shaft headache. So first, we've got this little guy right here. Get that out of the way. Oh, maybe I need my socket back up. carrier bearings that hold this thing together. There's one there and there's one right back there behind that light. Those are 13s. You're going to need a long extension preferably on like on a half inch impact because you're going to hold and lift at the same time and that can be a bit of a pain. So this really goes better with two people. You have one person up here and one person back there and then you'll bust these off put your tool down and slowly bring it down this is kind of hard to get on film without smacking the camera we'll do our best to do so hey before you go to break this loose you're going to want to uh take a hammer and chisel and just break the flanges loose off of the transmission and the differential first otherwise you're going to do these carrier bearings and it's going to hang by the rust that holds it in and then it's going to pop off when you're not ready so Tyler's going to do his side first. I let him drop. What are you doing? 
Need more power? Oh, is it dying on you? Yep. Don't worry, the Milwaukee will save the Matco. Oh, whatever. Hey, look, that one's battery's working just fine. Do not drop that drive shaft. You'll bend it and it'll be out of balance and you'll need a new one and they're expensive. All right, so now we can go ahead and pop this transmission cooler line out. Let that drain out. Now's a good time to go get some coffee. Or a beer. If it's late enough or you just don't care. Here, does it does it really depend on the time of day? Alright, we're gonna let that drain for a bit. As you can see that fluid is incredibly black and nasty. That Mercon LV gets black incredibly quick. So we're pretty much the only thing stopping us now is the exhaust. 13 bell housing bolts, four turret converter bolts, and uh, a starter that's in our way. Oh, by the way, you should have unhooked the batteries by now. Harrison from the future again, unhook your batteries. Now, you don't actually have to unhook anything there on the starter besides just simply unbolting it. What I do is I take a trim tool, and pop this guy out. Now, you probably don't need a pair of needle nose. But pop this guy off move it out of the way and that whole starter can sit in this little hole right here. You don't have to unhook anything. Get into your hole. Oh, Jesus, ah, it went off the rails. Anyways, now we can unbolt that starter and pull it right back into here. Yeah. And this is where the Matco breaks in half. Ugh. There it Not went. Tight. Broke right in half. Yep, now he pays for having a long side. I'm not going all the way back to get a socket. You're gonna to want to support that starter yeah. so it doesn't flop around like a dick in a punch bowl. I'm going to. Don't forget to hook up this ground wire when everything goes back together. <laughs> you'll go turn on the key and you'll get a bunch of error warnings. It won't crank over. Ask me how I know. So now there's a little tab thing pushed in the block one of those little Christmas tree clips. I'm gonna pop that guy out and it just snapped on me. And where they used to put right. Push that guy out of the way and that gives you your access to your torque converter nuts, which none are showing right now. But that right there is where you're gonna get to your torque converter nuts. Wow. Now to turn this thing over is a bit of a bear because of this radiator cross member. So you're gonna have to kind of reach your hand up in there. A flex head ratchet with an 18 on it comes in real handy. And you're gonna crank her over until you see each torque converter nut. So now we just bar the engine over until we can get to a torque converter nut right there. And an electric ratchet is really your friend here, but Tyler doesn't like those for some reason. Yep. I believe these are 15s. Hold on, we'll check for you. Ooh. 
They are mechanical locking nuts, by the way. Oh, this engine has good compression. There's another one. Alright. Now you're going to hear something when I move this. Hear that clink, clink? When this thing goes back together, you want to be able to hear that sound. What that means is the torque converter is not being pinched up against the uh, the flex plate, which means your torque converter is all the way seated. If you're going together and you're barring it over, and before you have any nuts on, you can't hear that clang, clang, clang. Yeah, something's wrong. Stop what you're doing. Go back. Next, we're going to take out this bracket right here. This is a 15 mil super fine thread bugger. A ratchet wrench really comes in handy. That's got to come off. I got the poo on me. What's really nice about these and these transmissions, pretty much all new transmissions, bam, just unhooked the entire transmission. Oh, and then it's off here. Yeah. Alright, yeah. You're unhooked over there, right? Yep. Alright, so that's all our wires. The two short ones go up front here. Don't forget that. They're the ones that thread into the bell housing. Teamwork makes dream work. Now that one right there, don't forget, has that little bracket that holds the shift cable away from the trains. You got that one? Now there's one right up top there. It helps to lower. The transmission down a bit. That motor mount can flex a bit. I can kind of see it. I'm literally tiptoeing around it right now. Push. Yeah. You got it. Oh, I, I can see it. It's just a matter of getting it to seat 
all the way on there. Get on there. There we go. There. Hey, your ratchet just broke. No. Yeah. Battery just popped off. How'd the battery come out? Got one more up there, it holds down a bracket. So does that other top one. I think it's a bracket for the vent hose, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Ouch. Well, oh, that's just happened. Come on down. You're free. Okay, come back soon. That thing's heavy. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get the last few things that we need off of this transmission. The torque on these is 46 foot pounds. And I'm gonna need a wobble. to go up there. I've supported the uh, front of the engine with a jack just to keep it still for us and tilt it down just a little bit for us. It's got a lot of freedom of movement on those motor mounts. You don't want to go tweaking them too much, but you can use it a little bit to your advantage. It's not going to hurt anything. We need to make sure that this vent hose goes back on when we go back up there and that we don't pinch anything on the way up. 
Oh, uh, another thing you can do, hold on, same time. We need a clock, our torque converter, bolts, and our flex plate at north, south, east, west. And we need to do the same thing with our torque converter. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to get you close to when you get up there. All right, come on up with it. Get you one in going from the back. I'll pull it up there. I gotta see that real quick. I'm gonna tighten this down. Alright, so we're going to torque all of these bell housing bolts down to 35 foot-pounds. The two guys that hold the starter are going to stay off until we get our torque converter nuts on. Now, Ford sends new torque converter nuts with their transmissions. That's what this is, is a Ford transmission. But if you are getting it from somebody else, Make sure that you have four new mechanically locking torque converter nuts, and just for safety's sake, I throw a little bit of Loctite on them. Mm -hmm. All right, all these torque converter bolts get tightened to 35 foot-pounds. Before you put this in, make sure it's clean. There's no rust or green crusties or anything in there. Go ahead and send that guy home. And you're gonna. Put your starter bolts in. Do not forget your ground strap here. And the torque on these guys is 26 foot-pounds. All right, so before you ever hook your new tra your trans cooler lines up to your new transmission, leave these guys in and just give this a gentle purge. We want to get all that old fluid out of that trans cooler. <laughs> oh. Money shot. We're gonna call that good and I'm gonna go clean up. So you want to make sure that your seals are nice and clean. You're gonna pull this off and some plenty of transmission fluid is gonna come off. Just lube those up nicely and seat those gently into the transmission. The torque on this guy is 20 foot-pounds and the torque on these guys as well is 20 foot-pounds. We're gonna go ahead and leave our shift cable off for right now so we can still get our drive line hooked up but then after that all we have to do is just pop it right back on there. Okay. Don't forget to get this guy tight. I don't worry about torquing it. All it does is hold a bracket for your evap and fuel lines, but it's super important you do not forget this guy. Alright, so we have the cross member out of the way that we temporarily put in. Right now we just have the, the transmission supported with a regular old vertical jack. So now we can put in 
the new catalytic converter assembly, we've already moved over our O2 sensors to the new catalytic converter assembly. Tyler's coming this way with it right now. exhaust on we're gonna semi permanently mount our transmission cross member we're gonna leave out the front bolts we're gonna leave our impact spreaders pushed to the side that way we can still get our uh, cross member back up in there First thing you want to watch is the steering shaft because it'll catch on everything. Over here is brake lines, fuel lines, AC lines, coolant lines. Keep going. Okay, let me show you guys something like I've shown before when removing these subframes. The subframe will have marks. As you can see, we've got them completely covered. There's also kind of like little you know, dimples that get made into the sheet metal from the subframe because the subframe has dimples on it too. You want to make sure that you get settled right back onto those spots. You want to make sure that you're not off-centered at all. You want to come all the way around. Make sure that you're covered up exactly where you were before. Right here, because we're not making contact with the top yet, you can actually see one of those little dimples right there. And we need to make sure that the dimples line back up because that means that our cross camera is going to be exactly what it was before. All right, so the rear bolts that go vertical get tightened to 184 foot-pounds and then 180 degrees. And then the front ones are what color? The nuts, which are supposed to be replaced by the way. What? 129 foot pounds. So it occurred to me that uh, most of the people that watch my videos pretty much stop at the disassembly part. And the only people that watch any further are probably just looking for torque specs. So that's all I'm gonna cover. Um, these guys get torqued to 77 foot-pounds up here and out back. These guys for the little hoop get torqued down to 18 foot-pounds, not that that really matters. These guys are 35, they're the last thing to be tightened. You want to get your shaft in position, tighten it up, and then these get tightened because they can float back and forth a little bit. Again, 35 foot-pounds. Uh, we already covered everything on the side of the transmission. We already covered these guys here. This guy, your tie rod gets tight and tightened to 59 foot pounds, put Loctite on it because they want you to throw it away and get a new one because it's a nylock and good luck getting parts right now. And the same with that one, 59 foot pounds. This is 159 foot pounds, same story with it. Make sure you put Loctite on it, clean it up real well because it's also a nylock and they want you to replace that. Then after that, it's just a matter of putting your crash bars back into place, your front valence panel, which we've done already. Uh, we snug this down, this was like 18 foot pounds. You know, there's a clamp back there to put back on and don't forget your little t30 right here that has to be put back on and your 10 mil that holds your power steering line after all that it's just a matter of start it up you want to get it up to 200 degrees and check your fluid level which of course you check by removing you gotta be careful everything's hot right now removing that guy clean it off real good and uh, once it gets 200 degrees you want to be somewhere in the uh, the B range I think it is it's the higher one um, which we are and also you want to get it hot enough because we had to purge out our cooler you want your cooler to get hot 
your line's here to get hot. That means hot fluid's running through it because that's going to make your fluid level drop a little bit. But Ford sends their transmissions with a good amount of fluid in them. So, And then don't forget, like we did, to uh, plug in your O2 sensor on the back of the valve cover there. After that, you know, of course, top it off with power steering fluid, and then you're good to go. Guys, I hope that was helpful doing just a transmission remove and replace video on this one. Nothing really else. Um, figured that might be helpful for people that are just looking for that. If you uh, liked it, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know if you didn't like it in the comments section, and we'll see you guys on the next one.